Terrific. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Jane Saroyan, and I am a gap year counselor uh, with J2 Guides and co-founder of J2 Guides. The, the J2 stands for Jane and my husband and colleague Jason. I am so thrilled and honored to be moderating a discussion this today, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you're calling in from on a gap year in the arts. Um, and people are still coming in. I'm gonna take about two minutes to make an intro and a welcome and then release you to um, hearing from these just amazing four programs that are here with us today. Um, I have been involved in the experiential education field. It's a little bit of a mouthful for 25 years. I have sat in every role. So for parents and educators and students and other programs joining in today, um, I hear you. I've sat in your seat. I have been the gap year student. Um, I'm now sort of the, the, the nervous, loving parent. I have been a field instructor shepherding students through these experiences. I've been a program director and a director of a national organization. Um, looking at content curriculum risk management. And so now as a gap year counselor, I, I take all of those hats and again, have the privilege to sit here and, and both vouch for these tremendous programs they are gonna share with us their story and tale of arts in a gap year and also help curate your questions as the discussion goes on. Um, so what we have in store for you is again, four tremendous organizations and, and the directors really of all those organizations. So welcome to the gap year field. You will very quickly realize realize that you're going to have tremendous one-on-one -on -one interaction with the people that are at the heart of these organizations. That's not something you can say for every field. Um, and so about a two-minute flash um, with some slides for most everybody, I believe, introduction. And then we've curated a number of questions um, that we know are kind of on the tips of your tongues or minds. So I'll help facilitate those questions. And we've allotted about 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So you can use the chat box with questions, um, but if you can try and hold on to this to the end, I think that will be ideal. Um, and if I can address them while people are talking, I certainly will try to. So I am going to mute myself and without further ado, um, let these tremendous um, arts experts introduce themselves and we will begin our journey of a gap year in the arts. Welcome again. Well, very warm welcome from Normandy, France, everyone. My name is Andrea Martin. I'm the artistic director of Verge Programs, and I'm going to give you a two minute whistle stop tour of our gap year program. This is Verge Creative Semester, um, which takes place here in Normandy. And this is our residence. This is Chateau Le Mont Epengue, an 18th century chateau here in the heart of Normandy, France. We've been running programs here since 2008. So a really unique opportunity to live here in Normandy, France in this historical residence. The program is 10 weeks in length. It's divided into six modules. So weeks one and two are our cultural immersion. Uh, that's our cultural immersion module. So seeing all the things that Normandy has to offer, um, the D-Day landing sites, medieval Bea, this is the picture of Mont Saint-Michel, a 900 year old monastery on a tidal island. So lots of touring, lots of out and about in weeks one and two. Weeks three and four are our artistic uh, practice intensive weeks. So you work in your chosen discipline guided by professional artists. These are the disciplines that we support on our program. Um, everything from complete beginners, if you wanna learn something new to experienced artists. Week five and six offers a your choice. Um, we have arts internships. Uh, there's a two week filmmaking course you can participate in or optional French language learning from beginner to advanced. Week seven and eight is our, what we call our arts in action. So you can choose some community service, you can volunteer or have a teaching placement um, and, or do an arts activism project, raise awareness for a cause. Um, anything that you feel drawn to in week seven or eight, um, we can support. Week nine, the whole group goes to Paris for the week, uh, for a whole week uh, of arts and culture in the City of Lights. And we return to the Chateau week 10, is our arts festival uh, showcase for an invited audience. So a premiere of all your work that you've done uh, during your time with us. The Barrage experience is really about a supportive, creative community, all led by professional artists. We really value time and space here in Normandy, France and on our program. So time to really build skills, 
uh, to learn new skills, uh, lots of space to create, to reflect, to connect with yourself and others. And then um, all of those uh, benefits of doing a gap year program, the boost in confidence, of enriching your sense of self, expanding your worldview. You heard a lot more about those as we go on today um, in our seminar. So that is an overview of our program for creative semester. Great. Hi, sorry. Um, my name is Rosie O'Gorman and this is my husband Frank Abruzzi and we're joining you from Wexford which is in Southeast Ireland um, from our space cowhouse studios and so cowhouse is an artist run school and residency located on my ancestral home where I'm the farm where I grew up in County Wexford and the farm has been in my family for over 300 years and the ideas for our studio developed when Frank and I were studying for our Masters in Fine Arts in San Francisco about 15 years ago. And today the studios coexist alongside our working family farm. And it's very much a family venture with both my younger sisters working alongside us as well. So when Rosie and I were in graduate school together, we came to recognize the incredible value of things surrounded by like-minded people. Uh, I think it was this intoxicating energy that really drove us um, to set up Cowhouse. And Rosie and I share a real genuine passion for art education. And we decided that our studio would be a place that supported contemporary art practice at all levels. So for the last 12 years, we've hosted students and professional visual artists from all around the world. And it's through these experiences that we've built our gap year curriculum. So at Cowhouse, we teach drawing, painting, darkroom and digital photography, digital media, including video, illustration, and some of the fundamentals of animation. Considering our small scale, we've built really extensive facilities and there's plenty of space, space in our studio for people to spread out and explore different mediums. And so we're a small program and um, we take nine students and ultimately it's the size of a program that allows us to teach in a way that's really quite nuanced. We learn a lot about our students during their time with us and this knowledge and understanding of them as individuals feed, feeds into the guidance and support that we provide in the studio. Whether it's enjoying meals or traveling together, getting over those uncomfortable moments of trying something new or achieving something really unexpected. All of these add up to an experience that is challenging, rewarding, often quite transformative and lots of fun. Okay. So thanks for that. Thank and, you. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk a lot more. Hello, my name's Nicholas Ross. And I'm speaking to you from England, and I'm just hoping that's full screen. Great. And I'm uh, the founder and director of an organization called Art History Abroad. Uh, we've been running for about 35 years, I think. And uh, essentially, we, where, where others are um, focused on creative, uh, you know, being creative, we're more on the, on the history side and, and learning about the context of these things. And uh, with that, I'm just going to move through. And what makes our, our program particular is that when starting this, I think I was about 23 and I just finished my degree. And what we really wanted to do was to make the best sort of an, uh, learning environment about art or for art. And it struck me that the best way to, to learn these things is to one, go and see the real thing. Secondly, go and see it with uh, a, a, an expert, somebody who really knows their stuff. And at that point, somebody who's close enough in age for you to be able to relate to and uh, to do that in a small group. So although there might be about 20 on the whole party, um, we divide into groups of no more than nine for teaching. So you can see here Lavinia explaining something in the Baths of Pompeii. Um, and, and that seems to be the secret of the formula. Um, then the other things is that uh, the, the, our tutors, as I mentioned, we try and maintain uh, a, a very young tutors, uh, people who've recently come down from university. They're really at their cutting edge. They're quite often doing PhDs at the time, and this kind of fits with their life. And um, the important thing is that they are engaging and that they can provide the context. So for here, here this, is, um, this is Henry uh, in Venice in front of the Salute. And he's reading on a gondola from Byron, uh, Lord Byron, who wrote some pretty marvelous poetry. Um, the other point about this is that tutors speak over a huge range of subject matter. Um, and moving on to the third point I wanted to make, um, we do have a creative aspect to this because 
To be honest, learning about the creativity of marvelous people like Michelangelo and Botticelli and all of those sorts of people in the Italian Renaissance and the ancient world, it's all very well learning about these people, but, but you've got to be able to turn it, you've got to be able to make that as an inspiration in your life. So we invite uh, students to uh, do a project, they can do what they like. Some people write restaurant reviews, other people do huge drawings, there are any number of different things going on. And what we're aiming to do is to create or for you to fall into the um, creative habit. And I think that's a commonality between all of our trips. Thank you very much. Passing on to Ryan now. Hello, guys. I'm Ryan from Irish Gap Year. I'm just going to be getting my slideshow queued up here from current slide. Great. And I'm going to let the video play for our Irish arts and culture program in the background as I talk you guys through what we do here at Irish Gap Year, what makes us unique, and our Irish arts and culture program. So this program is 11 weeks in length. It's in Donegal in the northwest of Ireland. We were voted National Geographic's coolest place on earth three years ago. So very beautiful place, spectacular nature, friendly people, small villages. Um, our students live in a household that they manage with the support of our program leaders over this 11 week period. And so they're building their independence, they're building their real world skills, they're building their adulting, all transferable to college, all transferable to your adult life. Uh, in the day to day, you're working with a range of local professional artists across a whole bunch of disciplines. So you'll be painting, there's filmmaking, uh, there's creative writing and editing, there's uh, drawing, there's wood carving, there's weaving, uh, mixed media upcycling, there's jewelry making. Um, so these things are done in a low stress, fun environment. And you're going to brush up your art skills. You're going to learn some new skills. You're going to try lots of new things. But our, our take on art is that it's a connector. It's a connector to yourself, what you're all about, your peers, the culture here, and most of all, our community. So we actually run these programs uh, in the town where we all live, uh, where our team is from, and that welcomes our students into that fold. So it's a really unique community experience for our students. And uh, apart from making amazing art with, with professional artists each day, we travel all throughout Ireland. So every other week on the program, we have a trip to a different part of Ireland. It could be two days uh, in Northern Ireland. It could be a week in Dublin, Galway. We go all over the country. So over those 11 weeks, you'll actually spend about three weeks on the road um, getting to see the country. So what, we, what our students get out of this program is they build their independence, they develop new art skills, and hopefully they take away a new way of looking at art as well. Um, you know, because you're getting all these amazing perspectives from various artists. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to have art experience to do this program. You just have to have an interest in exploring your creative side. So a lot of structure, a lot of support, 11 weeks. It runs in the spring and the fall and 14 students on the program. I think that brings me probably to my two minutes. Um, and yeah, I will hand it back over to Jane. Amazing. Right, what a what a wedding of the appetite of these eloquent um, and really tremendous programs. And you know, I should say that this is obviously sort of a gap year 201. This isn't a 101, as we might say here in the States. So we are presuming that you have some fundamental information about how to take a gap year, why gap year. We can always address those another time. So this is that deep dive into how would a gap year in the arts work for me or my child or my student? Um, and that's what we wanna dive even a little bit more deeply into now. Um, so I wanna help kind of just throw some questions at our amazing panel here. Um, and I wanted to start with Nick uh, from Art History Abroad. And, and, and I feel like this is really your wheelhouse. This is everybody's wheelhouse, but can you share with um, our, our community here today, how study art on a gap year? This is a big question we get. What makes it different? Why not just do it in college or university? What makes studying art on a gap year um, different and special? Um, I, I think the first thing is place. Um, uh, I think then that's common to all of us. It's an amazing range of sites that we all uh, inhabit with our gap years and and the variety. I've, actually, I've learned quite a lot from, um, from Ryan and and Frank and Andrea about where they go and, and, and how rich their programs are. So that's, that's one thing, I think, to be able to explore Europe uh, in this way uh, with a kindly hand. And as Ryan said, to, to, you know, these are real world experiences and growing up and so on and so forth. 
And, and indeed, there's nothing to stop people from, at the end of a program, then carrying on tra traveling around Europe. It's a pretty amazing place. Um, and, and bearing in mind that, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing variety of sites that you can go from Ireland and, and all over Italy. The, the range of what you're seeing is huge. And, and that's a real insp inspiration, uh, let alone the environment and the context and the massive history. Because if art has anything, it has a great deal to do with our identity. And to be able to see ourselves uh, within different environments and with context is fantastic for our own creative impulses. The other thing, what makes it different to college? It's short term. It's relatively short term. And so many people go to college because they think I've got to get a job. I've got to orientate myself to some great future career. And as a result, they hurry past their creative impulses and, um, and lock themselves down, to, to use a hackneyed phrase. Um, but, but the point is that you can really explore. And I loved what Frank was saying about, about you know, getting to know people really well in this close environment. Um, and, and seeing people make that transition towards being and getting into the creative habit. And that's definitely something that we do across the board. All of our programs do that. And, um, and I feel that's, that's the major thing is that it's, it's have a go. It's, it's a have a go culture. And, and that's really important. Yeah. Mm. I'm so value you saying that, Nick, and I, I know that, you know, whether it's the arts or something else, we talk a lot in the gap year field about um, exploration without performance. So this is that moment for young adults to step into an area of interest without that heavy burden and pressure of productivity, of grades, of being measured, but really giving themselves the gift of, of growth and exploration on their own terms in a way. Um, somewhat similar, but I want to uh, sort of elongate this question with Andrea from Baridge uh, talking to us about, you know, just the benefits of, of a student, of a young adult spending time abroad at this ripe age of 17, 18, 19 years old. Um, what is it that you see happening to your young adults? Yeah, well, you know, time abroad gives you that incredible shift in perspective, you know, the view just opens out and, you know, what we see with our students is they become so receptive to their experience when they're abroad, you know, this sort of sense of wonder and adventure starts to take over and, you know, they become primed to really take full advantage of what these programs and particularly what arts programs abroad offer all of these programs that are here today, what they offer is this feast for the senses, you know, every minute of every day. Um, and students really start to embody their experience more fully, you know, living through the senses, the sights, the, the sounds, the smell, the taste, the touch of these historically and culturally rich places. And you know, these programs are really an opportunity, not just to live in a different place, but actually to live in a different way more fully, more connected, more immediacy, more richness, more beauty. You know, you're not a tourist on any of these programs. I always say that about our program, you're not a tourist. You're not looking, you're doing, you're experiencing and you're participating in it. You know, and it's such a fantastic life lesson, you know, to be a participant, you know, in your own life and be more connected, more fully to your own life, not, not just a tourist. And you know, I say, and I, I know this is true of all these programs, that we're really just not um, enriching students intellectually, but we're actually enriching them soulfully. And I think that's really important. Yes, wonderfully, wonderfully articulated. Thank you. I know we could go for down the rabbit hole with any one of these questions for an hour, but I'm just going to keep us moving forward because there's a lot of great questions that we received. So we're, we're trying to get them out the gate, but um, let's go over to Ryan um, and Irish gap year. And, and I think you're the perfect person to answer this question outside of the arts curriculum. You know, tell us about kind of the breadth, what kinds of activities or experiences um, make can make a gap year in the arts unique and not just arts, but what else is happening in these experiences that are giving students this full experience? Yeah, I love this question. It, you could definitely spend a lot of time on this one, but I'll try to be brief. I think that, you know, there's the people, obviously, there's the friends that you'll make, um, being able to spend time with creatives, other creatives, your own age, 
and the tutors that you're working with. You know, whether you're working with Frank and Rosie or other artists in Ireland or Nick and his team, you're gonna meet a bunch of artists that all have a different take on, well, what is art? What's my approach to art? What's my philosophical idea of art? And it's so refreshing because you're doing it because you love it. You're not doing it for an academic purpose or for any real means. It's very much about the process. So I think the people is a big thing. I think the places you'll go, you know, they're outside of your actual art workshops and curriculum. I think the places you go are absolutely amazing on all of these programs. You're gonna to go to some um, places of great antiquity and beauty and natural beauty. So, I mean, definitely some incredible experiences to be had in travel. Um, and then I know on some programs such as our program, the arts and culture program, we also throw in a mix of outdoor activities because it's so near to our heart and it's right on our doorstep. So we like to take our art students for things like kayaking trips or surfing lessons, um, or we'll get our art materials and we'll go off for a hike. And we, you know, we might go hike up to a castle and paint it and sketch it and learn about the history of the castle that way. And I think all of our, all four of these programs have the equivalent of that. So it's, you know, once you're away from that curriculum, yeah, that's gonna give you the technical skills. Yeah, you're getting expert, um, tutoring in those areas but I think it's more about the connections that you're making to the people the places and all the things that happens kind of in the in the ether of it that makes it magic that's great and I, I think it's so important for families to really take that away and the, the educators we have on the call that any thematic program you know wilderness or language or arts will have a holistic in the gap year field we're all about the whole student and so there will be these deep dives these immersive experiences but also really held in context as andrea said this is about soulful growth not just intellectual um frank and rosie tell us a bit about some of the common misconceptions about the value of an arts education. Um, so thank you um, for the question. Um, I think, you know, Rosie and I really believe, and I know everybody on the panel really firmly believes this, that art is, is really for everybody. I think one of the common misconceptions uh, one of the things that I think we run into over and over again is, oh, you know, my kid's not an artsy kid or, you know, they're just not there. Like, that's not where their interests are. And I, I always kind of wonder where that comes from. I mean, I have some, some guesses, but, you know, I think, you know, as someone myself, and I know this is true for everybody on the panel, like we have varied interests, you know, um, you know, we might love sports and we might love math and science and things like that, you know, but uh, engaging with art is really about um, thinking in a particular way, um, thinking more openly about subjects and, and different approaches. Um, you know, I think the best way to really talk about this is to just talk about some of our students. And we actually have a girl here right now, Zoe, who's going to study computer science, you know, and she's decided during her time here that she's going to do a double major in computer science and visual art. And I was so happy to hear that because she is such an incredibly creative person and she has this great spirit. And I think that, you know, in pursuing art alongside uh, programming, you know, I think it's gonna help her think a little bit differently about um, her professional career and the way that she attacks problems and, um, you know, understands the creative parts of her mind. Um, and I know that that's something that, you know, students would get on any one of these programs. Um, and so I think the common misconception really at the core, it's about like, you know, thinking, you know, there's a particular type of student that, you know, studies art, you know, all of our students are really surprised, you know, when they come and nobody has pink hair, you know, that's, you know, just the way it is. Like, it takes all types, it takes all kinds. And I think just another common misconception about studying art is that art is just about a skill. Um, whether that's something, and I think that kind of can often relate to where students are coming from high school, that might be their experience in high school, that it's just about the technical ability, but as kind of has been touched on by everybody who's spoken before us, it's about developing a connection to the world, and we certainly believe that art is about pursuing your curiosities, and by doing that you can apply it to any walk of life or any career that you choose to go down. Um, and so that art is not about developing skills, that's part of it, but it's what you choose to do with those skills and what you want to explore and say about the world and about your experience of the world. And so, yeah, I think that misconception about what uh, art is and then what, you know, the type of person is who chooses to pursue it. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's great. I, 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 it's a really important question because they're just, we all know there's so many misconceptions about gap year in general. And that's, I think a lot of us see ourselves as national and international spokespeople trying to really kind of make sure everyone's working with some, some shared language and data um, and anecdotes of, of the real potential here. Um, I want to open up a question for all of our panelists, and and this is a biggie, but you know, uh, I think a lot of us can manage some of these big picture existential ideas and concepts, and it feels very sort of beautiful and evocative. But like any parent or professional, then there's the question of like, well, how does it all work? So like a little bit of a day in the life, you know, food, housing, social life. Is my kid going to be alone? How often are they meeting? How many hours a day? It's a lot. But if, if in, in any particular order, I invite each of you to address this, give us a bit of that snapshot of kind of some of the, the brass tacks, the nuts and bolts of, of what a day could look like on your program. Uh, but very briefly, if I just jump in here and start um, on, on Art History Abroad, we, I have to say we work quite hard. I think it's the same for every single program is that, you know, it's it's work hard, play hard. Um, at, you know, that's an English phrase. But anyway, um, uh, the 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 idea, you know, certainly on Art History Abroad, we go out, uh, we start at nine o'clock. We go out to look at uh, look at things. We go off in these small groups that I described. Uh, we stop for coffee. Coffee is amazingly good in Italy. Um, so is lunch. Um, followed by, followed by in our case, a siesta for 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 a while because all of the museums close, fortunately. And um, people use that time to go off and and explore and to draw and things like that and just soak up the atmosphere. And I think that's a really key thing. And um, and then in the afternoon, uh, at about three thirty, we start up again for another session going to look at these things on site in these small groups that I described. And, um, and then at about 6.30, uh, we, we stop. Uh, one of the tutors will go around and talk to all the students, say, you know, what would you like to do this evening? Because Italy's so various. And um, we, you know, if we had a cheap pizza last night, let's go and see a film tonight, or let's go somewhere more expensive, or if there's a great show or an opera in town. And so we try and live two days in one. And I think the crucial thing is that everybody's together for long enough to become really, really good friends. And that is so important. And there are friends that are made for life on these trips. People have come as individuals because they want to be there. And, and that's something that I hold dear. And, and it's been lovely watching our cohort over generations uh, doing that. Anyway, I better shut up now, um, but thank you. Yeah, I'll hop in next. So for us, um, our day starts at nine as well. The program leaders arrive to the student's house. Uh, we're kind of unique in this space because our students actually have their own house. They live there, they manage it, they're doing their washing, their dishes, etc. cetera. Um, they are very much supported by our team. We all live within five minutes of them. So if something goes wrong, we're there. But otherwise, there's a lot of personal growth that comes in managing a household with your peers. Um, so the leaders arrive at 9 a.m., then quarter to 10, out the door, 10 to 1, they're doing a morning workshop with a local artist. Then we come home, we give them an hour for lunch. Everybody makes their own lunch or walks into town. Uh, it's a 15 minute walk to a cafe. Um, then in the afternoon, we'll either do another workshop with another local artist, but more often we'll try to mix it up and get out and about. So we might do a site visit to a gallery or to a castle or to a nearby city or town, or we might say, hey, you know what? It's beautiful weather. Let's take the kayaks out and take you guys for a kayaking trip. So we kind of try to keep the balance between um, art, working on our art and then doing things that are just kind of cultural or naturey. And then a big group meal in the evening around 6.30, home cooked, and then free time in the evenings and the guys can come and go from the house as they like. So that's what a typical day would look like for our students. And so at Cow House, um, just to mention, you know, it's a 12 week program and the first four weeks are kind of spent doing a deep dive into all the kind of materials and equipment that everybody would have at hand. So they'll be drawing and painting, photography, both digital and dark room, and um, then time-based works working, say, with sound and video and animation. So the first four weeks are kind of every day is a little bit different, but the basic structure is always kind of combining the studio hours with uh, workshops and skill based kind of projects and then focusing on ideas and content and doing that through kind of critiques and tutorials. And so trying to find that balance between ideas and technique. And so 
we kind of keep studio hours from 10 till 5. Um, everybody lives in our a space called the barn. It's a 300 year old converted building that's on the farm where I grew up. And so it's very much a family environment. Um, our students all live in the same building. Everybody shares a room with another student and we take our food very seriously. Um, we like to feed everybody well after a long, hard day's work and make an art in the studio. And so we'll start, you know, everybody kind of takes care of their own breakfast. And then we'll start in the studio at 10 with typically a drawing uh, workshop. That might be something that's um, observational or something that's more experimental. Uh, we'll do some collaborative workshops in the beginning as everybody's getting to know each other. Our second workshop in the morning then will be a variety of things from, you know, drawing, painting, learning how to use um, a manual film camera to making prints in the dark room, depending on the week. And then we have lunch from one to two. We sit family style, at, uh, you know, everybody sits together for meals. We kind of see meals as actually kind of an extension of the conversations you might be having in the studio. And it's a really great time to, you know, make silly jokes and just to get to know each other in that like lovely atmosphere. Um, and then we have a third walk workshop in the afternoon that is generally taking people out um, to make work on site. You know, there's a forest and a pond and 300 acres to explore on the farm and a mountain right behind us. Um, and in the afternoon, there's usually in late afternoon before dinner, there's some time for students to figure out how they want to use their time. So maybe that's continuing research or going for a walk or jumping in the pond for a swim if they're feeling adventurous. Um, and then, you know, after meals in the evening, sometimes we have an organized activity. We might screen a film, we'll do different artist talks, but it's really a time for students to kind of be together on the farm and um, kind of continue with their, their projects as well. Yeah, and I would just add that, you know, like Rosie mentioned, in the beginning, there is a bit more structure to our days because we're really giving them the foundations of all these different mediums that they can then use. And, you know, in, a, in one way, our gap year program shares a little bit of DNA with our residency programming, which is actually more for professional artists. And so by the end of the program, our students really know how to approach a day in the studio making independently, which we really feel like is an incredibly valuable um, tool because we don't want our students making art to assignments. We want them thinking about what they're really interested in. And so how do you approach like a three hour gap of time where there's no assignment, there's no like set activity. It's like, okay, here I am and here I am like with myself and I've got to figure out how to make art. And that's really for us, I think, the most valuable moment in our program. That's great, thank you. That's incredible. I think we've got one more. On I'm gonna be very brief because I, I gave the whistle stop tour of the modules uh, early on. So you got a sense of how it's broken down. Um, and I echo what all of these program providers are saying. Our pro program is structured very similarly that, you know, lots of intense time spent um, in artistic practice and cultural immersion. Um, I'll just add that here in Normandy, we live very much by the seasons. So on our program, we really live the Norman way. Um, this program is scheduled to take place in January, 2022. So um, winter is very mild here, very pretty actually in the winter. Um, as I mentioned before, time and space to create, to reflect, to, um, you know, really play. I mean, there's a lot involved in artistic practice around, in, you know, encouraging our students to play and experiment. And, you know, perfection and the mindset of trying to get it right for an artist is, is deadly. So there is no getting it right. Um, you know, we really encourage a lot of play and a lot of risk taking and, and leave a lot of time and space to do that. Um, and to just be here and enjoy life here in Normandy, France. Uh, everything shuts from 12 to two. So there's a long, lovely uh, sort of family style lunch hour. Um, like all of these programs, you know, culture, nature and food is right at the heart of everything we do. That's great, thank you. I, when I was a field instructor with Jason, one of our mantras was food first and foremost. So we all know that 18 year olds really need to be fed well before really anything productive can happen. And I just wanna point out one of the threads here that I think and hope people can hear is there's also a big front loading at the beginning of these programs with a lot of structure. So students don't have to kind of figure out a lot of those decisions by themselves. So a lot of front loading, this is what I'm hearing of, of skills, of lifestyle, of training 
And then as these progressive experiences go on, students take more and more of the reins of how to use their time. I think that's what Frank was even touching on. It's like, we're also talking, these are life skills. This, this isn't just a gap time. This is a life skill of learning how to manage one's time, learning how to access and really go for these resources that are just being made available to them. And initially, again, lots of guidance and how to go after that. And in these programs, what I'm hearing is more and more encouragement for students to then really spread their wings and find more of that independence and autonomy and agency as the programs unfold. All right, Ryan, let's go back to you. Um, tell us a bit, you guys have a wonderful and long history in, in, in culture and in outdoor adventure and leadership development. And then, you know, you, you, you gave birth to another wonderful program focused on the arts. So clearly you saw there was real benefit there. So can you share with us a bit about how this makes such a distinction, but why, why study art? What are the benefits of that on a gap year for someone who has tons of experience or, or none? Yeah, I think that, um, I think what you'll take away from any gap year program in the arts, whether you have experience as an artist or not, is like, this is a time to top up your well of inspiration and you can draw on that later. It's a time to recharge and you're doing it through the lens of the arts, you know, on all of these programs. So I think that's the essential gift that each of these programs have in store for the students is it's a time to top yourself up, find inspiration and recharge. Um, it's also time for introspection. I think that art for a lot of people um, is an introspective process. It's a connector, of course, but then there comes the time to step back and say, well, what does this mean to me? How do I interpret this? You know, and, and that involves a certain amount of looking within, which I think all good gap year programs incorporate, whether it's an outdoor program or an art program. It's important for young people, especially at 18, 19, 20 years old, to start thinking about what am I all about? You know, what does this mean to me? And art is a beautiful way to get out of that frontal lobe and into that creative space and, uh, and intuit those things, you know? And, and these are low stress environments that are really supportive. It's a unique environment that each of these programs create. It's fertile ground for, for that intuition and that, hey, what am I all about? And that really serves students well going into their adult lives because it helps them to develop a compass of, you know, who I am. You're, you're kind of stepping off the roadmap of academics and into that creative space of, hey, I can go in any direction because I know who I am and what I'm about. And I think that art is really just a vehicle for that. So that's my take on it. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, Frank and Rosie, I, I feel like this is such a great question for you because of this also wonderful history you have with this land um, and your family, but witnessing students being in a prolonged experience, not just an art class once a week for an hour or, you know, a summer two week intensive, but to really be just immersed in art um, with you all. What do you think are some of the unexpected benefits of that kind of prolonged engagement in the creative process? Yeah. So I think um, kind of touching on, you know, reiterating some of what Ryan touched on and then what Frank spoke about uh, previously, one of the biggest things we would see is that kind of um, desire that students have and maybe aren't given the chance to make their own decisions. And um, especially kind of coming from a high school setting where maybe things are a bit more prescriptive. And, you know, at a recent kind of info session, one of our former students who was with us a few years ago said, you know, she's from New York, she's taken loads of art classes, she's done lots of summer programs. And she said when she came, she said it was the first time an art teacher had asked her what she wanted to make work about. And, you know, I was really surprised to hear that with her, all of her experience, but it was really um, informative because it, it allowed us to, to kind of think about, well, we, we, we understand that making art is all about making decisions. It's all about, you know, whether it's a blank piece of paper and a pencil in front of you, okay, now you have to decide what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? What am I going to draw or paint? And or what am I going to make a video of? And so it's, it's all about decision making and problem solving. And then that leads to when you're analyzing something, critical thinking, and then you have to, you know, the ideas of researching and taking and making something from nothing, but then also how you spend your time and how you pursue an idea. So if you have three hours, how do you go about um, getting from A to B and what are all the little steps in between? So it's, it's a lot of it's about like giving control to somebody to make decisions, which is something that is, can often be quite new within an art making context. Um, um, I, I think one of the things I wanted to expand on there that Rosie was talking about is really 
it it's for us, you know, process is so important. So, you know, I think that one of the things that students might not really understand when they come to us is that the creative process is exactly that. It's not about executing on some sort of preconceived idea. You know, making art is a real exchange. It's a back and forth thing where you might have an idea and you start and then the work starts telling you something else because either you make a mistake or it leads you somewhere unexpected and you have to adjust and, you know, figure out like what the correct path forward is. And that's not something that you can do in a short period of time. That's something that you need time and space and you need time to make mistakes, you need time to fail, you need that space. And that only happens over the course of a full semester. Amazing, thank you. I know a question that many of us have, arts or others, what happens with our students after this kind of time? Where, what do they go on to do? Um, Nick, could you share with us a bit about what, what do your students, what have they gone on to do after an experience with art history abroad? Okay, so, so as, a, as a general rule, um, uh, and we did the, the research on this a few years ago, we get about a third of our students are uh, going into the arts. And by that, I, I mean anything from architecture to doing history of art at university, um, to going on to being a fine artist, a set designer, you name it, in that, in that creative sphere. And uh, about a third of them are doing that. Weirdly, about a third of our um, intake go on to do medicine or veterinary science. So we get real scientists. And I bet that's something that others find uh, on their programs. And, um, and that's really exciting. And it's fantastic uh, from a teaching environment. It just makes things really quite wacky. And um, so that's really good. Uh, and then there are the third who are going to go on, uh, you know, and go and do something like history or English or, or, or languages at university. Um, and uh, then in terms of their greater career, um, it's really interesting. We've had people over 35 years, um, we've had people who've gone on to be We've got director of Christie's, another one who is head of uh, uh, communications for Sotheby's. So people end up going into the into the sort of auctioneer world. We've got uh, two or three pretty thumping academics. Um, but to be honest, a lot of people just go on and do, you know, entrepreneurial things, or they go into what you might consider sort of regular careers. But but what's exciting about it, and what's so nice when we speak to people who have maybe come with us 20 years ago. They say that um, you know the the that art history abroad they they turned up seeing things in black and white and they left seeing them in color, and and that's the, that was amongst the nicest thing. And the other the other thing that really amused me I remember one parent writing saying I sent my relatively indolent son to you. Uh, they spent six weeks with you and they've come back and they're impossibly opinionated, and they. They, they were quiet at supper, now they're really conversational. And it's that confidence. And I think that's, that's the, 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 the really important thing. Anyway, it's, it, yeah. So, so the people are untypical. They go on and do amazing and different things. Uh, but there are some, you know, some, some aspects of this, which you might expect about a third. Anyway, I hope that's useful. Perfect, I think wonderfully useful. Um, and the last sort of individual question um, is for Andrea. And, you know, I think the question on everyone's mind around the arts is how much experience do I need to uh, audition? Do I need to submit a portfolio? How much experience do I need to have to participate in your program? I'm really excited to answer this because it's the shortest answer in, in the whole, <laughs> whole question series. The answer is none. The answer is none experience. So for us, um, and I think I speak for um, almost everyone here, Frank and Rosie may have something to add to that. I think they have a portfolio requirement, but you know, we, we have students all the way from complete beginners who wanna learn new skills and we mentor very experienced artists and everything in between. You know, as Frank said earlier, the arts is for everyone um, and we welcome students of all levels of experience. So none experience is required. Great, and I'm gonna guess we have pretty much a thumbs up. Did you wanna add something to that? Anyone on this one, thumbs up here? Or? I, I guess we'll just really briefly mention that we do have a portfolio requirement. Um, you know, 
our students sometimes worry about that because they think that it has to be really professional. But, you know, we love to see works that are in sketchbooks and things like that. What we really want us to see is that the students that are coming have had some engagement with art making in the past because it is a studio based program. So we just want to make sure that that's there. But um, it's not something that students really need to worry too much about. We actually help coach them through how to prepare their portfolio, which is actually a nice little learning experience in and of itself. And then similar to Andrea, we would have students that are really haven't made art in high school at all, but doodle at home by themselves to students who are intentionally, you know, want to go to art college and be making art. So it's a real wide variety of students too. That's great. Thank you. So, I mean, the, the takeaway message here for, for parents, students, educators is do not be intimidated. This is the time. Gap year is the opportunity. You are being invited to go for something that you may have little to no experience in, but a curiosity a, a, and a passion for. And, um, and that's really the messaging of Gap Year. I want to throw out one question, which I know is often on everyone's mind. And then this is a great time for people to start using the chat box. You can put a question in. If it's specific for a program, you can articulate that. If not, please just put it out there and I can try and help direct it. But if you want to start using that chat box, that'd be great. But until that moment, money. Um, funding a gap year is usually of real concern and question for families. Um, we know that arts and a gap year, arts in some of our European locations can, can also be um, one of those more expensive opportunities. So can you all, each of you, just take a moment to share with us what is your advice? Um, what kind of financial aid or scholarships do you offer? Payment plans, anything just to help families understand um, how this may fit within their, their financial parameters. Uh, great, should I go again? Um, okay, so, so uh, we, I think I should say straight away, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a scholarship that's offered by the Gap Year Associate. Can you just describe that really briefly? Yeah, and I believe the deadline has passed, and I should have known that before I called them, but go overseas. If that is not an organization you are following, um, they run the USA Gap Year Fairs annually. That's where all of us are speaking and presenting all over the United States, usually for all of January and February. This year went virtual, but, but thousands and thousands of families are, are logging in to learn about these experiences. Yeah, Holly just confirmed that the deadline has passed, but if you have a junior this scholarship will be opened up again. There are two gifts this year, $5,000 and $10,000 scholarship. So thank you, Nick, for bringing that up. Um, and please, families, bookmark that. I'll put something in the chat box for any non-seniors who could be looking towards it for next year. Okay. And then and then we, we at Art History Abroad, we have, uh, we have a scholarship. It's called the Trenchard Scholarship, Trenchard Cox Scholarship, who um, was a very elderly and distant cousin of mine who was director at the V&A, uh, the Victorian Albert Museum here in London. And um, and and essentially, it's uh, to, you've got to write an essay about uh, a work of art that you love, and then a work of art that you loathe, and um, and it throws up some pretty interesting answers. the 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 value of the scholarship is uh, this year uh, it was four thousand three hundred pounds, which is quite a lot of dollars, and um, and uh, we had one hundred and sixty applicants this year. Um, and uh, we whittle it down, obviously, and then we get somebody important to make the last choice. And uh, then there are runners-up prizes. Uh, I think we, we, uh, in terms of scholarships, uh, we give, you know, we give uh, about eight to nine thousand pounds a year. Um, there are also bursaries um, that we offer, uh, which are entirely discretionary. And, um, and people are invited to, to put in some work for that. And then there are a whole plethora of things that I'm sure everybody has. You know, if you're a sibling of somebody who's come on the course or, or um, uh, you know, the, the, those sorts of connections uh, whereby, or let's say if you introduce somebody who, uh, to, to us, uh, then, then we can offer a little uh, discount to both parties, so it's fair. Uh, so there are so there are those sorts of things. There's there's a there's a page on our website. I think there are ten different ways to save money, and you can accumulate um, these 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 uh, these these things. Uh, and one last thing, and certainly in the UK, uh, there is a scholarship fund book, or now it's a huge database, and we're actually just about to strip it for for things uh, that, that you know. 
um, opportunities and that will be public on our site so so um, um, we're very happy to share that we want you know things to go around uh, so that's us thank you yep i'll follow that oh go ahead rosa you guys go you get thanks ryan okay um so yeah cowhouse we offer three specific scholarships we kind of reformulated our scholarship programming in the last two years um trying to take extra considerations into how we can make our program accessible to different types of students and so we have three scholarships the first is our portfolio scholarship and that's a merit-based award so it's an application with a portfolio and um, a statement of intent you know letter of recommendation it's pretty structured and um, quite simply but that offers um, a tuition discount of 25 percent and then our second and third awards are need-based. So our need-based awards both require financial um, information. And the first one is a 75% scholarship um, of the total tuition. And then the third scholarship is our diversity award. And this is for students who are coming from, you know, historically underrepresented uh, groups in Ireland and abroad. And this covers 100% of the tuition. And, for us, you know, this the scholarships hopefully will some um, of our listeners and our um, people engaging today might be um, eligible for these scholarships, but we'd love people to share um, with friends or family or with our teachers or college counsellors, because we're always looking for students who are deserving of, um, you know, of coming to Carous with these awards. So, yeah. So for Irish Gap Year, we are big fans of bringing students into the fold and onto the programs who really want to be here. So we also have in-house merit-based scholarships available. For us, it's a conversation. Um, we speak to the students, we speak to the parents, we get to know what's going on with your story. You know, what do you need from us to make this happen? And that is basically done uh, for students who are a great match for our program. And what that means is that they really, really want to be here for the right reasons. And they might just need that extra bit of scholarship um, or, you know, a, a deduction in the program fees to make that happen. We've gone uh, from literally zero, having people over for, for zero, right up to a more typical scholarship would sort of be in the 1500 to $2,000 range. Um, so, you know, it's a conversation. It's a conversation with me because um, I do the admissions and, um, you know, it, there's always a few students on scholarship for us. And um, what we ask in exchange is that that student keeps a student blog while they're here and just writes about their experience in Ireland so that other students can read it, prospective students can get a feel for what's it like from a student's perspective. Uh, we have quite a robust scholarship program here at Barrage. So we have a merit scholarship uh, for the gap year program that is uh, an award of $2,000 and that's open to every applicant. Um, we have a financial need scholarship for up to 50% of the program tuition. And we also have a diversity scholarship just introduced this year and that's 100% um, of the program tuition. Um, the application information is on our website, of course, uh, and it's usually a teacher recommendation letter, um, an interview with myself and a personal statement to apply. That's great. And, and this is such an opportunity in learning to ask, learning to ask the tough questions, family asking, what's your COVID protocol? Students asking, is there financial aid? This is such a powerful moment for these emerging adults. Um, and finances is big. And one thing I would also suggest to you families, as a gap year counselor, my job is to help families assess not just the quality of programs and the suitability, but finances is a big part of it. And it may be that you're just perfect program is going to consume a good amount of your budget. And that could work if another semester is home working or your young adult finds a lower cost work exchange program. So it's often the case with our families that they are spending a good portion of their budget on a three month experience that really just checks all the boxes and is going to meet all of their goals from that social, spiritual, artistic or other level. Um, and yes, this is our, our final minutes to keep um, addressing any questions. I hope I know everyone's just taken um, everyone's names and, and, and websites and, and programs down. None of us are hard to find. Um, I wanted to, I'm just gonna make a comment or two and, as we wait for any final questions. It's always great to wrap up on time. And um, uh, 
you know, there's a few things that really stand out to me. Um, and well, one, and I'm sure everyone in this presentation can hear just how passionate and experienced um, and empathetic uh, all of these um, amazing directors are about their programs. This, these are the kinds of people um, and will trickle all the way through all the instructors that will be mentoring your young adults on these programs. So this gives you a really good taste. Um, and this is a starting point. So, you know, if you have seniors or current college students who's looking to take pause in the 2021, 2022 gap year, this is the time to be doing this and then some. So your next thing, if you're like, I want to talk to Nick or Ryan or Andrea or Frank and Rosie, you should, the moment we get off this, email them and set up a free consultation. If you have a sophomore or junior and you're sort of still just hesitantly exploring it, I always recommend to families that you start following programs on social media. Um, everyone's given great images and student stories and anecdotes and it's a great way to stay connected oftentimes gappers and people inquiring about the gap year feel rather isolated i'm the only one considering this well you will learn soon enough that you're not the only one there are thousands and thousands of young people taking gap time um, and so the sooner we can get you connected to sort of those interests and community the better um, and I'm not sure if anyone, ha I can make some concluding remarks. I'm not seeing any questions um, pop in and we're sort of here on, on the final few minutes. But so again, if, if, you, if you're if you really thinking of gap soon, now is the time just to like take a deep breath and you know students to feel courageous and just get out there and talk to programs in more depth. Um, ask for alumni references. You have to talk to other young adults or parents of those young adults who've done these experiences. Um, and again, for those of you who have still younger uh, adults coming through the high school ranks, you have some time, but stay connected to the field. There's so much happening. As you've heard, there's, there's money out there. There are um, gap your events out there. So find the way to keep this momentum and, and inquiry um, alive in your family. For me, um, I just want to make sure there are no questions. I'm already looking. Okay, great. Um, you know, my takeaway in, in listening to these amazing people is, and I, it might have been Ryan who said it first, but it's certainly the theme from everybody's art as the connector. Art is the connector to self, to others, to community, to place, to inquiry. Um, to introspection, to identity. So again, this has been an amazing and enlightening hour on the arts and the gap year, but really could have just been about the gap year because this is what we're talking about is students using art in this particular context to expand them their, their sense of self and others and community, their place in the world, who they want to be, how they want to be, how they want to express themselves, how they want to look at things. And all of us here, you know, there's, there's got to be a few hundred years of experience <laughs> combined <laughs> among um, this panel um, have seen it happen time and time again and watching these emerging adults really come out of a, a semester or a year of these kinds of experiences is much more empowered and informed young adults and and what more could we want for our young adults as they move on so i will pause there i don't know if anyone else wanted to just unmute and say goodbye but i'll just say thank you so much to everyone who is here thank you to these amazing panelists thank you for inviting me to be here um, a very inspiring way to to resume my day that's for sure and i, I just want to and i know i we we all agree participants and and uh, guests um thank you uh, jane for um for moderating, I always think doing these things is um, is rather like flying a helicopter. You've got to use your feet and your hands and your head all at the same time, and um, and I couldn't do it. And you did it brilliantly with easy grace. And uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, yeah, Jane, I wanted to extend my thank you as well. Um, really appreciate uh, you doing this for us. Um, I don't know if any of the other programs wanted to mention, but um, we are going to have an information session next weekend. Um, I'm just going to paste that into the, um, the, um, the chat there. Um, but, you know, it'll be just, um, we'll have an alumni guest uh, as well for that. So if somebody was wanting to hear a little bit more about our program specifically, um, they can do that. Um, or they can, of course, just contact us directly. But Jane, thanks so much uh, for taking the time uh, to do this. Yes, thank you so much, Jane, and thank you to all my colleagues and to everyone who joined us today. 
And I will also say thanks. It's so good to see you guys uh, on Zoom, as, as you know, as we are in these times. Great to see you. Thank you so much, Jay and Jane and Jason from J2 are absolutely awesome people, guys. Um, they are just really, really great people and they know so much about gap year and they can pull things from every direction. Um, like Frank and Rosie, we also host webinars throughout the summer. You can find them on our website. There's a webinar tab. If you want to talk to me, we have a whole range of different topics that we have webinars in. So check that out on our website. And thanks to everybody for joining us for this conversation and have a good weekend, everyone.